This is Marquois the Irrelevant hosting. It's a pitiful show. Every show more pitiful than the last one. That's not necessarily true, but it is a good tagline. I've been told. Uh, here from the wine garden, bottles of wine in a garden. DIY, do it yourself. You can do this. Uh, today we are not being, uh, we don't have Billy and we don't have Daisy because we're fighting over what I believe is the success of Billy's Jackson Pollock food t shirts that he's selling on eBay. So they're not here today, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, hold on, we have a caller. Yes. Yes, I hear you clucking big chicken also. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? Okay, wonderful. You're the fifth state as we're, uh, we're rolling on here. So thank you for the call. Okay, we have another uh, call. I hear you clucking big chicken. Keep, there. what's the saying? Keep trucking. Keep on trucking. Keep clucking. Is what we're gonna go with. Uh, that was from from Massachusetts. So now we have Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Florida, and Massachusetts. That's five. We want to get uh, the clucking going in every state of the union. So uh, thank you, Massachusetts. Topic today is uh, concerts. I used to have great concert experiences until like the 90s when everybody messed up the pre-concert experience first concert alpine valley i know a lot of you know where alpine valley is uh journey we got up there at me and my friends got up there around noon and the concert wasn't until like seven and the thing is everybody else was already there the parking lot was packed and what we were doing we were cooking out we were playing frisbee Drinking beer, and I believe it was Heineken this uh, this time. It was a special. Uh, it was a special uh, occasion, and also I remember sp specifically Jimi Hendrix in the background on the boombox. This was a great all-day affair. So you can't do that anymore, because now when you pull up to a concert, as soon as you get out of your car. You're trying to go, you know, to maybe your trunk where your beers are in a uh, cooler. And they're like, sir, you have, what, 30 seconds to get inside and you can't come back out until the end of the concert. That's the difference between the 80s and now especially. But uh, the, the whole concert experience has been kind of trashed in my uh, opinion. So that was that concert. Great concert. Uh, second... Uh, one of my favorite concerts at Poplar Creek, and I know you know where this is at, if you know me at all, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. And if you know uh, Poplar Creek, the, we had lawn seats. We had good lawn seats because we got there early. But if you know the, the lawn seats, they go up to, like, heaven. And the whole concert, and we were exhausted Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band had the whole place rocking. I remember getting up, or I was up the whole time, but looking around and everybody, even back to the fence, was just rocking. So that was a great concert. I also want to plug Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. I love live uh, albums. Live Bullet, if you have not heard Live Bullet, go listen to Live Bullet. That is a great live album. So there's that. One of the best concerts I've ever seen. And exhausting and one of the most, and, and also, if I can throw out there, Bob Seger, one of the best lyricists uh, out there. You know, they tell stories. It's not uh, sleep all day, drink all night, garbage lyrics. He had real stories to tell and put them to, uh, uh, to song and uh, then the third concert experience also a great lyricist Bruce Springsteen now I was talking about Bob Seger being an exhausting concert this was uh, a concert at the Rosemont Horizon we're not going anywhere else it's the Rosemont Horizon and forever will be with me 
Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> he plays like a four-hour concert. Four hours, I swear. And in the middle, he has a little break. So the first, like, let's say two hours. Two hours, we're sitting there and just, just sweating. And as soon as he takes a little break, let's say a 15-minute break or whatever, the whole stadium cleared out. Like the concert was, wasn't was going to be started for another two hours. Where did they all go? The beer line. The beer line. You could not get a beer to save your life. So you go there and you're like, we're not getting a beer. You know? And it's been two hours since our last beer out in the parking lot. So we go back inside. Again, he just, we're exhausted. We're sweating. We have no beer to energize ourself, uh, you know, rekindle the, the, the water that we're sweating out, and uh, the most exhausting concert ever. And at the end of the concert, after all was done and said, and the lights went up, you know, uh, everybody just exited very, you know, standing ovation and uh, the, whatever the after songs are called. <laughs> um, everybody just exited very quickly everybody was in the parking lot trunks were open coolers were flying beers were being had cannonball whew, chugging beers and you know re-energizing uh, ourselves so that was another uh, great concert but there should have been more access to beers you know like at Wrigley Field anybody beers beers but there was none. So that is my, uh, what is the, see I have nobody to talk to now. I'm very lonely right now. Encores, that's the, the thing I was talking about, encores. So on behalf, on, on behalf of, I'm in Florida, there's bugs floating around, floating around like bats in the air. On behalf of myself, Mark Quad, the irrelevant hosting its pitiful show. This was a concert show, uh, sharing some of my memories with you. Um, and how now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? And also, I hear you clucking, big chicken. Thanks for the ad from Massachusetts. Keep working out there. Let's try to get this uh, clucking. Keep clucking. Keep on clucking. Let's uh, try to get it to every single state in the union.